What is it in here, Tim? Oh, of the pandemic? Dude, we're on week nine. <laughs> this is Man. crazy. You, I mean, Mike lost his hair. You're growing your hair. John's about to go get a haircut. I mean, things are wild around here, man. But listen, thank you, National Parents Union, for having us. Very excited to be with you once again. You have four dads here joining you once a week to give you our heartfelt ideas, our feelings, where we are in life. Uh, we thank for everyone who's been watching us. I think we're averaging about 13,000 views a week. Wow. Thank you, everyone. We recognize you. Uh, we can't thank you for all the support you're giving us. Give us some show ideas. We'd love to hear more. Mm -hmm. We got a good one for you today. I'm going to be really uh, do a lot of free flowing conversation with us all. And uh, know that I'm coming from San Diego. My name is Dr. Jose Manuel Villarreal, and I am father of Nathan and Noah. And let's kick off with Tim. Great. I'm Tim Langan, the National Parents Union. I am the father of uh, Max and Dylan, who should be running in here any second now. Hey, Mike. Michael Scott, Director of School Improvement from Canton City Schools, uh, father of, as you can see back there, Grayson um, and uh, Addison. I love it. All right, John. Yeah, John Monteleone, Superintendent. Um, hail from Lorraine and father of Rochelle and Antonia. That's beautiful. So let's get started today. You know, I've been thinking, doing a lot of thinking about you three men and dads, and I want to start off with sort of a warm-up question. You know, what's going to be your move? I know John mentioned a little bit about a move he had, he put on someone, but what's your move when you finally see someone from work uh, that you have to interact with because America's starting to reopen? Are you going to do the Heisman, uh, you know, with the palm on the forehead? I mean, what what's going to be your move to social distance yourself and protect your family when you come home, uh, I'll tell you that I just did home visits on Monday. We every Monday deliver food and I took the principal with me. And as soon as that door opened, the young man who was a fourth grader heard the principal was there. He was around her waist in less than a second. And she was stunned. She didn't know what to do. She was like, oh, hey. And I said, look, we can't open up a school if you can't even handle one kid. Mm -hmm. I said, how are we going to handle kids in the future being in education, but just in general, just in life? Let's start with you, Michael. How, what, what's going to be your phrase, your move? Uh, because for me, in my culture, I mean, we do a lot of hugs. We do a lot of handshakes. I mean, what about you, Michael? Move. Get out the way. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, seriously, I'm going to, I had this experience. I was taking a walk with my wife uh, mm -hmm. last week and my kids and a neighbor from around the block, you know, he was outside and stopped and he was doing his laundry. I see you guys walk all the time. I just want to introduce myself. And he said, my name is Sam. And he extended his hand. And I was like, Whoo, nope. I just, I was like, I can't do it, brother. Uh, but nice to meet you. And, you know, I kept it moving. I think it's just, you know, to be, to, to be serious though, I think it, you just have to, you know, express your boundaries. Like, ah, I would love to at this point um, until we are, uh, vaccinated and, 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 you know, can move on. Social distance matters. It exists for a reason. It's not just about me. Um, it's about those that we would contact with, right? So, you know, I want to be able to go to my parents' house and be outside with the kids. But if I'm, you know, touching others or, you know, giving high fives and who knows what I'm, you know, carrying at that point, it's not worth it. So I think just having open communication and dialogue too. Mm. How about you, Jeremy? The Heisman is effective. It works. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. How about you, John? Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to practice restraint myself. And, and, and Mike, Mike will tell you, Mike has worked with me for many years, and, and I, I'm a touchy-feely guy. Like, it, it's, it's kind of how I show my affection. You know, I, I always like to grab somebody by the arm or, you know, give them a hug or, you know, just, just touch them. Just let them know that, you know, like, hey, I, I love you. And, you know, um, he's a you know, how, how are you doing? And, uh so, you know, I, like I said before the show started, you know, me, me and my daughter, we went for a run in one of the local metro parks and saw an old, an old colleague that, you know, he ran up to me and was like, Montaleon, I miss you, and, you know, embraced me. And I, I, it was such a weird moment because normally I, I would love it and, and encourage it. And I, I just kind of froze. I, I froze and it was just that personal touch, like, put me in shock. Um, and, you know, and, and like I joked, like his girlfriend looked at him like he had just like, you know, broken every norm in the world. And uh, 
you know, I, I wasn't mad, but you know, I was a little bit concerned afterwards. I, I have to mm-hmm. say, like that 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 touch and that feel mm-hmm. was just very different. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, I came home and you know, showered right away, took off all my clothes, and you know, mm-hmm. made sure that they were separated from the rest of the family and Cloroxed my, you know, so I had my my phone in my hand, Cloroxed all that. So it's I haven't thought about it. I've been doing the Corona bump. That's kind of been my move lately, you know. Um, so I'll probably stick with that. Uh, but I've been really good unless somebody like really tries to embrace me. I hit them with the bump, and and if they don't, then we just keep it moving and, and talk it out. Wow, good stuff, I, good, Tim. Yeah, I hear you. I, I'm gonna go with Michael here as always. You know, I think honesty is the best policy. You know, um, and honestly, I don't have a poker face. So if you can tell how I feel right away. Um, I, I, I brought some baby clothes over to my, uh, my next door neighbor. I've been clearing all my kids stuff, old toys, old clothes, bringing them over. And, and, and my neighbor tried to, uh, you know, grab the bag for me. And I was like, whoops, <laughs> you know? Um, but my hand signal would be like, whoops, or gotcha. Uh, but I, I'm going to be honest with people that right now, um, you know, I, I need people to stay six feet away from me. And I, and I also say, you know, I've got two elderly parents at home got a couple of kids that those are, they're my number one concern. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I think I'm going to follow Mike's lead and just saying, I'm not comfortable handshaking, never really comfortable hugging anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to follow his lead. Well, it comes and it begs the question of today's show is, but aren't we supposed to be tough? I mean, if we look at our great grandfathers and they put that salve on that neck with that big old rash and they healed up, get that mud on that cut. What, what, what happened to us? I oh, mean, man. you know, let, let's, let's talk about it because I'm looking at an article right now from NPR from April 10th. The new coronavirus appears to take greater toll on men than on women. Hmm. Well, how is that possible? In our genes, aren't we supposed to be men and tough? So, so Michael, I mean, let's talk about it. What, what's going on? Yeah, uh, I, I can be tough and safe. Um, I guess is is my response to that. Like honestly, I love that. Um, you know, my, my mental toughness to keep the six foot distance in order to keep my family and others safe is is how I'm gonna define uh, toughness in that case. Like over, like intent, not intentionally, but unintended consequences of getting sick and then muscling through it. Like right, we all do that as you know. Well, with good work ethic, right? I don't miss work. Um, one of the things I think I said earlier in maybe one of the other episodes, like my grandfather worked in the steel mill, never missed work, right? Went to work sick. Um, well, we got to redefine um, that, 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 that toughness. It's mentally tough uh, to me in order to keep people safe, stay at home when you're sick at this point right now, right? Because um, we know that there's an impact that goes beyond those that we even see, right? So if we are carrying and, and we get someone else exposed and then they go, right? That's how we end up back to where we were nine weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So to me, that mental toughness is being able to say, you know what? I'm going to stay true to, to, to these recommendations because they're the right thing for people. Um, yeah. All right, Tim, what do you, what do you got? Yeah. You know, there's, 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 there's being tough and then there's being smart. Um, I'm going to, you know, I like to replace tough with being smart and dependable and, and you know, you know, I think we talk a lot about what, what do real men do? You know, mm-hmm. real men, if you, t- if you ask me, they take care of their family. They take care of the ones they love. And, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day and I said, um, you know, I think people are starting to get a little bit lax as far as social distancing goes and they think they can go in public places. And, you know, I'm not there yet at all. And um, for me, you know, 20 years from now, I might give my kid a complex from keeping them inside, but they're not going to look back and say, Hey, you know what? I got sick, you know, or I was in harm's way because my dad kept me inside. Um, there's no way my kids and my family are getting through this, um, no matter what I have to do. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm the same way as, as, as he said, you know, it used to be go to work when you're sick. Um, no way. Um, I'm keeping mental toughness. Um, I see, I think a lot in this the, in the neighborhood I live in, I grew up in this neighborhood since I was 11. Um, it's become very gentrified, you know, uh, when I grew up here it was, you know, 99% Brazilian and then me. Um, now what you see here is a lot of younger people here who are walking around thinking, um, it's not going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. It can't happen to me. It happens in those other neighborhoods, like, uh, the minority neighborhoods at East Boston and Mattapan. Um, 
I'm all set with that. Um, I'm going to be weak. I'm going to stay inside and I'm going to wear my mask. Wow. How about you, John? Aren't we supposed to be tough as men and as dads? Well, listen, I, I, I've always been a hypochondriac. So I, when it's come to stuff like this, I, I've never been tough. Like I, I'm the guy that carries the, the sanitizer in his pocket, you know, is constantly rubbing it all over. Um, but you know how the saying goes, the greatest ability is availability. Uh, and, and like Tim says, you know, I, I got a, I got a, a dad who's a widow. Um, you know, he's, he's 80 plus years old. Mm -hmm. I, I got to be there for him. I got a daughter that's in college. Uh, you know, it's not free. I got to make sure that, you know, that that's paid for and, and she's able to go to school. So I, I'm, I'm like, you know, Tim and Mike, I, I got to make sure that I'm practicing social distance and not just for myself, but for other people too. You know, I, I, I have a very big conscience and I couldn't really live with myself if I got somebody else sick or, or brought mm -hmm. harm to somebody. Hey, hey, John, let's stay with you. When's the last time you took a mental health day before Corona? When was the last time you took a mental health day? Not because you were sick, but on a mental health day. Yeah, yeah, and 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 kind of like Mike and Mike, Mike can vouch for this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not one that misses work. You know, I, I kind of grind through it. Um, I, I get my, I get my mental health fix um, through, through the gym, through running. That's that's kind of like where I, I get my serenity. Um, so it's 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 been a while. I, I think. Probably the last time that I, I took a day and, and didn't do any work was back in November when I lost my oldest brother. Mm. Um, that's kind of a, a time where I just kind of shut it down. It was right before Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, it was the last day that we were going to have school. And my, my CEO reached out to me and he said, hey, he was like, I, I don't want you coming in. Um, you know, take a day, be with your family, do what you need to do. So, yeah, I think the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, Jose was the last time that I, I really shut it down. Wow, thank you for sharing that, John. How about you, Mike? Well, so a mental health day, it's interesting because, you know, to put the work in a traditional sense is the Monday through Friday grind, right? But I, I haven't known that Monday to Friday grind. It's, a, it's been a seven days a week, um, which put me in a bad place uh, during a stretch of my life. Uh, you know, where, you know, I wasn't taking care of family. I wasn't taking care uh, of things that needed to be taken care of. And it almost cost me, um, mm -hmm. you know, some, some a very important person in my life, right? So um, the idea for me now is, is how do I take those days on the weekend and, and turn off the work, right? Uh, because, yeah, I'm not going to miss much, you know, now with little ones. So if I am going to miss, it's going to be because my wife who's staying at home with kids is sick. Um, so I want to make sure if she's not doing well, then, you know, dad steps in. And, you know, I, I, I realize I can do those type of days. But for me, um, you know, I make an hour drive to work. So that's my that's also another space. So, so I, I put on the gospel and uh, or whatever it might be to get me through. And that's how I uh, mentally recover or just take the time to clear my thoughts. So to me, it's not necessarily about taking that uh, Monday through Friday off. It's just making sure that you leverage uh, the times, A, within the day, all right, to, to, to uh, take care of mental health. But then also on the weekend, um, you know, make sure that I'm prioritizing family and not just like Mother's Day, even though I threw that out on all weekend on Mother's Day, fellas, just put that out there too. But, you know, doing that more just consistently, right? Um, you know, and taking care, because to me, like taking care of my mental health um, is just growing on the floor with the kids or making sure that, that my spirit, uh, my faith is, is paid attention to, um, checking in on others, as I talked in previous weeks, like uh, just randomly sending a shot of people. That's all mental health exercises to me. Um, so as long as we're doing those things, then I can grind throughout the Monday through Friday. Hmm. All right, Tim? Yeah, I got to tell you, the good thing about working with families and, and parents now in this job is that it, it, it forces me um, to take maybe not mental health days, but like even just to stop and relax. Like I, I'm used to work in the corporate world. And I mean, I would go and I can't tell you how many days off I canceled to go in and, and, and to help out or to. It's funny. I thought that that was a demonstration of me being like professionally tough. You know, so my biggest regret, a lot of my biggest regrets actually as a dad are times when I, I cut 
like time out with my kids to go help in the office. Um, I can tell you the company I worked for is a kajillion dollar company. They were doing just fine without me. Um, they would have survived, you know? Um, and those are some regrets, you know, I look back on now and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta make those right, you know? Um, but of course, working with families now, I, I'm kind of forced to say, well, my number one priority is my family. You know, um, the pandemic has actually made me, even though I'm working more because <laughs> I'm home, um, I'm, I'm more aware of it now. So I'll take time out to say like, hey, you know what? I'm done at three o'clock. I've done all I can do. I'm exhausted. I'm home already. Uh, let me go take a nap, <laughs> you know, or let me go out on my porch. Um, but I got to tell you, until I got this job, man, I, I, I left my last job with about a hundred and about three and a half weeks of uh, sick and vacation time piled up, you know, that I, and that's, that's not counting what I had lost. So. So let's, let's raise your hand to, to push back on me right now, but I'm hearing two different things here, gentlemen. I'm hearing with the first question, you are about protecting yourself and your family. But then when I ask about the mental health, I don't really take mental health days. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm feeling this, this sort of, Mm -hmm. it, it's not matching with me right now. So, all right, Mike, go ahead. So, I'm going to take care of my family, make sure everyone's safe, right? Because that was on one side. But I'm not, I don't take mental health days. But to me, like, those experiences that I have, uh, I, I talked about taking a walk with, with my kids and my wife. That's taking care of my mental health. Um, I, I just know that, so there's a piece of me um watching my grandfather watching my father like they're and and my dad owns this now like the mistakes he made at wanting to be the provider right that's why he didn't you know take time off that's why he worked i learned my work ethic by watching him like he worked every single day and then he became uh aside from his job and then he decided to own property so he was literally like out of the house all the time um providing right but what he said to me you know i became a dad um is that he wished he had those moments. And I think Tim, you also kind of alluded to the, the, the business, if something were to happen to us, um, it would like continue, right? So, so to me, like I, I'm trying to function in that duality space. Like, so I, I am gonna work, I'm gonna work hard because you know, I have to provide and that's my, my role. But also, you know, as, as, as the, the fatherhood I think has evolved, I need to be actively uh, an active participant, but realize that you know, participating with my family is not another task. Mm -hmm. That is my, that is my break from it all. That is my mental health, right? So I think I'm taking care of them both, I guess, at the same time. So that is kind of trying to live in that world, Jose, yeah. of, of doing both. Yeah. Um, hey, you're, you're threading <laughs> that needle right now, man. I love it. I love it. Huh? You're ready hey. for that defense, man. You're squeaking by. You Come on now. I just, I don't know. I'm, man, am I wrong here? I'm, I'm feeling yeah. the two different. Yep. Like we're all, Tim, help me out. It's, 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 it's a tug of war. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a tug of war, especially, uh, I got to tell you, in, in, in the corporate world, I mean, taking days off or going on long vacations, um, you know, it's, 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 it's frowned upon, you know? I mean, taking your kid. I remember one time I took a day off to take my kid to the circus, and people did a double take. They looked at me a little bit funny, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, you got you got to do it. You know, again, I mean, because I, I used to tell all my employees, I ran a bunch of call centers across the country, and I would give this advice, but I wouldn't take it. I would say, you realize no one's, you're not going to look back 30, 40 years from now and be like, oh, I'm so happy I came in and took 150 calls today. Mm -hmm. You're going to look back and you're going to have regrets over the time you didn't spend with your family. Yeah. You know, I can remember the worst time I ever did. I took my kid to see Iggy Pop one night at a concert and he was five years old. And the next day I was supposed to spend the whole day with him and we're going to breakfast. We we're going to have, we're going to go play at the park and all that stuff. Stupid me looked at my email around noontime, looked at my stupid email and all of a sudden there was an emergency meeting, you know? So I packed up, dropped him off, jumped in the car. Hmm. Sorry. No, that's okay, Tim. No. Please. And I and I ruined this day. Wow. You know? So it's like that was four years ago. <clears throat> no, that's not crazy. worth it. Not worth it. Need to find that balance. 
Wow. Worst thing that I think has ever happened is when uh, email gets to the phone now. That's the wor worst thing because it is. It's a, it's a, a almost an addiction. Um, like I check it. I look at my weekly time. Right. It, it gives you, you know the iPhone gives you your weekly screen time, and it's like, all right, you know, am I at seven hours this week? Nine hours daily? Like, and, and how much of that is work? I mean, it's all work for me. It's not. I look at the the breakdown. And very little is it personal entertainment or looking at photos of family it's it, it's the email it's that piece um yeah i'd like to hear from john but before we do that i just want to acknowledge the fact that we've built this trust and love amongst us as brothers mm. that john shared a powerful story and so did you tim and the way that you react so i want to thank you for that and uh same to you john but i'll tell you i feel that burden that you carry Tim, and you're trying to remind all of us not to get to that place. Mm. Uh, so thank you for that. John, what are your thoughts about what I'm witnessing here about us? Yeah, I mean, I, I see it, Jose. It's, it's, it's like two opposing forces. Um, and, you know, from, from my perspective, I, and like Mike and Tim said, like, I, I've, I've seen the ugly side of, of organizations. I've, I've seen the politics, and, and, and they will move on without you. Um, and, and we talked about that earlier before the, before the show about, the humanity of what we do and how we treat others. But for so for me, it's kind of like more of do as I say, not as I do, because if I take a day off, that's gonna affect somebody else. That's gonna affect somebody else's productivity. Something might not get done. They might not have a resource that they need. And so I, I, I get my mental health kind of like all of you through my outlets, either with my kids or, or you know through the gym. But the one thing that we got to remember here, gentlemen, and, and I hope we're cognizant of this, is that, you know, all of us are in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. And so when I say, you know, do as I say, not as I do, I'm very cognizant about creating a culture in our system where people are not afraid to take a mental health day. Mm -hmm. where people are not afraid to say, hey, I can't make that evening meeting because I have to take my daughter to ballet or I got to go and check up on my, my grandmother, or my grandfather, or I'm a single parent. And I, I just have to be there with that family. I never hold that against mm -hmm. any of the people that report directly to me because I know on the other side of that person is a, is a human being that's trying to provide for their family. And I don't want that in their conscious that, Oh my God, I'm missing this meeting or I need to get up and be grinding from 5.30 to 9.30 at night. I'm mm -hmm. not that type of boss. And I, I think that is the culture that we need to create, even if we're not really good at showing through example. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. You know, I, I will tell you that mine is layered and the burden I carry and I will say my first layer is certainly what was shared before, uh, with, like Michael did, watching my father grind. I mean, relentless, just getting up, working in the fields, working in the mines, doing whatever he's doing. So that was my, my model, seeing him do that. Seeing my mother do that. So I had these examples. But I will tell you that as, as a first-generation Mexican male and American male, I will tell you that I have this burden where – I, I cannot not wear a suit and tie every day. Mm -hmm. I cannot not take days off every day. I got to be pristine and perfect every moment of my day because there's not many of us out there. And, mm -hmm. these roles. and so I'm carrying the backpack and the burden of my ancestors and, and maybe hopefully, hopefully also sharing with the future leaders who happen to be of color. To, to paint that path as perhaps it was painted for me. So I'm, I'm wrestling with all of these ideas and these, these issues that, that are mine. I mean, they're mine because others can look at you and say, there's plenty of you, man, go to Texas. There's plenty of you, go to New York. And you're like, yeah, but I'm right here. <laughs> and, and I'm paving the way right here. So that's always an issue for me. And then for me as, as a man, I mean, what is my worth? You know, I, 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 am I to be tough to a certain extent. And, and I, I, I struggle with that. Am I enough as a man? Uh, and, and who am I enough for? For myself or for my wife or for my family or for who? But these are, these are the thoughts that I'm wrestling with on a daily basis. 
Uh, and and it's, it's not pride, though people look at it that way. And unfortunately, people who are ignorant will say it's that Mexican macho, machismo, which is super racist, by the way, to say that's somebody of color. And I just, I, I feel, I feel torn in this world, but I'll tell you right now, uh, the last time I took a mental health day may have been two or three years ago, mm -hmm. may have been, but it was a uh, by design on purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, was I like Michael trying to shut it down on this darn computer we carry around? Mm -hmm. It was hard, man. I ain't gonna lie. It was hard because it's just sitting right in my fingertips. So I, I just, I just wanted to point out, you know, that I see this dichotomy, the struggle that we're in to try to be our best selves, but being pulled in these two worlds. Did, did, did anything that I say resonate with any of you uh, from, from my story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially like you said, I, I grew up with my father working crazy hours, like 90 to 120 hours a week, getting that OT, always supporting the family. And I don't think I really appreciated that until I was older and I had kids. And it's, I always call it that, that psychic switch, you know, where you go from being a non-parent to a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a totally different mindset. All of a sudden, I had this baby I had to take care of you know um and my wife at the time wasn't working you know she was going to grad school so it was all on me so um everything i did like my showing up at work every day working crazy hours i mean i was doing it all for them um people depended on me you mm -hmm. know um so absolutely absolutely i totally i totally relate to that oh. and that's that i think that's where i come from the most is like i have people that depend on me like mm -hmm. I, I can't I can't miss a day. I can't miss a deadline. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like I, I, I lose sleep over that gentleman. Like I, I, you know, last night was a bad night for me, man. Like it was, it was a terrible night. Um, maybe got about 90 minutes of sleep just because I, I have a lot of things going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the next step's going to be. And, and that's scary, you know? Um, and so like, you know, knowing like how many people will, will, will be, impacted like you know by the decisions that i make and that's 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 crazy yeah and i and i i don't know if that's you know so i pose this question to you I, is that weak you know should i always have a state of optimism or or you know like what what are what are those is that a weakness you know that i i, I just shared with you no man I can tell you, the, the other night it was sunday night um i mean i was filling out forms which is not my thing for those ppp loans mm. you know you know, this is a nonprofit in the worst, I mean, economic downturn yeah. in, in, our, in our history. And we have people that, that depend on us. You know, um, I've been unemployed before. I don't want anyone to go through that, mm -hmm. uh, especially now. It's so hopeless out there, you know? And I'm thinking like, I don't care if it's Sunday night. I don't care. It's, it's let's, let's fill this thing out. People are dependent on me. You know, we have to make this work. So absolutely, I agree with you, man. You know, like I said, we're in leadership positions. There's people down the chain that, that depend on us for, for how they feed their family or how they pay their bills. Yeah. Mm. So this is interesting. Um, and I, 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 as I'm sitting here and, and listening to you know, all the commentary, the pressure, uh, the pride, um, the, the, you know, I, this is a dad for dads, right? So, <laughs> You know, to me, like the, the the thing that drives everything that I do, and I said it earlier, is is you know, the little ones up there, and it's like, yeah, they, from a financial standpoint, you know, they're okay. We're 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 blessed. We're doing well. Um, and even if we had to cut back our budget, like to me, that 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 time at home, um, and this is kind of you know, to me that there's there's a toughness in saying, you know what, this is the type of dad I want to be. Um, I'm going to break us in my case, maybe a cycle, um, that says, you know what, I, my kids are going to know that there's, that they're more important than work, right? To th that piece. Um, and I have to work on that. That is, that is a struggle. Like I'm, you know, I, it, it is hard. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I, I just want them to be able to say, yep, I, I learned what work ethic is, but mm -hmm. yep, I know how important family, uh, is as well. And that's where, to be honest, like my wife is my better half um, for, you know, lots of reasons, but she values that family structure and is constantly pushing to the point where I get annoyed sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I'm ready to argue about like, I'm doing this 
obviously for right but i have to take a step back that is the hardest thing um and as tim you said you know you, it's staying with me like staying in the moment when you are trying to make the moments and i make that mistake all the time like yeah let's go do this hold on i gotta talk to you know my, my boss just called real quick let me uh handle this meeting or um you know because you know you build relationships at work people just feel as though they can reach out and just send you you know it's like no i'm gonna cut this off so you guys gave me a challenge i think for the week now um i don't mean to skip ahead but yeah i want to share this because i think my challenge is going to be able to cut the screen time in half so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna shoot for you know i don't know what and this is gonna sound crazy to say that this is like a goal but it would be to to go to have four hours of screen time um on here versus the eight um and the eight is usually during the work like so i'm working here i'm working on the screen i'm working i'm gonna cut it down like so if i can't you know do the work in this box (laughs) um this box called a laptop then maybe you know it's just a little bit too much so maybe not being as accessible to others and when the when the work day is over putting it in a you know still having a ringer on in case my you know have maybe a special ringer for my parents or something like that um so i know if it's them calling but that's gonna be my challenge i'll report back on that next week um that's great you know, that's that's gonna be my mental health exercise i love that i love that thank you for sharing that michael i appreciate it i would say that you know behind me are are images that i've dr- have been drawing on the weekends and uh I, you know i did that for the very first time two weeks ago and spent three four hours without my phone drawing and i'm not an artist at all you know i do i do a little square box with the squiggly chimney i mean that's that's my my extent of art but then i just kind of gotten better at it you know in that regard uh come here come here that lilo and stitch behind you uh, yeah let, let me let me let me <laughs> show you my, my, let me show you my uh my teenager right here he just came in and say hi come here and say hello Huh? Can you say hello? Get on my get on my lap like you know dads would here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, nice to meet you. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you get to look look at the luxury on his head, man. The boy's got all kinds of love all this things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to, I wanted to show him uh because you know he is a firstborn. Mm-hmm. And he made me take mental health days Mm. and you heard my layers earlier and i'll tell you what that's what made me as a leader get into the rhythm of saying to my fellow teachers that if i build a system that if i leave for a minute Mm -hmm. i want it to be where they don't even recognize that i left for a minute Mm -hmm. because i mean it's a system it's not driven through me. It's not driven by me. And so that's when my driving force, since I can remember since he was born, because I, I, I wanted that moment to happen. And so he, he was a great reminder, just kind of the way it played out, uh, to say that my, I've not been ashamed to say that I've taken mental health days as he was growing up. And by the way, I'm sure you all have heard that children today are being impacted by Kawasaki disease. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. He had it. Mm. Oh, wow. Two years old. Two years old. Mm. This was now he's what, 12, 13? This happened when he was two years old. Took him to a pediatrician. Uh, bless his heart. Man didn't even know what it was. Mm. His fever would not come down. It was one of these weird fevers. Took him to Radies Hospital. You know you're in trouble when you're there at midnight and the resident wakes up like this and says, and I go, uh oh. Mm-hmm. When they wake up the resident to talk to you, you know you're in trouble. Long story short, impacted his heart, went through a lot of echo uh, grams, and I had to hold him just to put the sedative in his mouth and he'd throw it up just so he can sit still as a two-year-old. But now I know why it made sense for me to take those mental health days. And I didn't take a hundred a year, maybe one or two mm-hmm. another year, but I, that was a big moment for me, you know? And yeah, I called in sick, but it was to be with them. Because mm-hmm. I realized when he was two years old, how short life really was for, for me. It kind of cut me down to size. And that's why I, you know, I'm a former counselor, so I'm trying to break you all down, right? But really, it's, it's I'm hearing this, this we're, we're kind of caught up in these two worlds as, as, as dads, as men, mm-hmm. as citizens, as husbands, as sons, I mean, you name it. Um, so let, let's get into some advice here. And let's get into not do as I say, 
but rather, what do you do? What would you give that new father right now? What would you give that new father? Call it a new father who's in his 40s having a new a child for the first time, 60s, 20s. I mean, what would it be that you actually do that you would say, take this gem, young man, or take this gem, young dad, or dad, new dad? What would that be? And for me, I would say, take those days. Take those days because... If, you're, if your system's broken at your work because everything's around you, you got to fix it. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not about you. It's about the system. So mm -hmm. take those days. Model for people. Mm -hmm. um, I might not be the healthiest looking person in the world. right? I'm working on that. But I am trying to do it mentally mm -hmm. um, for my children. So what's that one gem you want to give folks? Right now, mine is take those days. Yep. What is yours, Tim? Take the, shut the phone off, you know, like take the, t take in the days, but the, to piggyback on that, shut the phone off. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what I feel the connection is, is, is. The issue is, is we're always connected. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember the first time I jumped on a plane after a sales meeting it was probably like 10 years ago. And it was the first time I was like, oh, I'm expected to answer the emails. I'm expected to answer these on a flight, 30,000 feet up, you know, but um, I know the best thing for me is because I'm a workaholic, man. You know, I just need to. I have to go cold turkey. Um, when I'm outside playing with my kids, I need to take that phone and leave it in the house or just shut it off altogether. That's what I would tell any new dad. How are you, John? That's, 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 it's, uh, I don't know, Jose, uh, and I'm not afraid to say that. It's, it's, it's a tough question um, because I, I, I don't know everybody's, everybody's circumstance. And, and I, I say that from a place where I have friends and family that can't take those days. Because it will literally mean their employment. Um, so I guess if I had to give a young father some advice, I would say go to work for an organization that allows you to take those days. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like re re research the organization and the, and the people that you're working for that you will be able to take a day or, or, or two and, mm -hmm. and not have it held against you or, or have to worry about employment. Mm. How about you, Michael? So can I offer two? And I don't know if, if, if they're gems, but it's just a little something, something. Um, just, you know, personalize, right? So be present. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a gift, you know, being present. Um, so the mental health, so peace is like so if i'm at work then i'm gonna be present at work um but if i'm present at work and i'm doing what i need to do then i should be able to be present at home if if, if, if i'm not um able to then i didn't do my maybe i didn't do what i needed to do on that uh work side of things right mm -hmm. so trying to you know get that in order but then most importantly like as i, I, I i'm listening to well, I, my wife behind the door you know uh, i think she was doing something with addison right now so your partner, um, you know, respect their uh, mental health needs too. Like, so for instance, um, my wife is to stay home. Um, that's her, you know, that is a grind, right? Um, she needs some, <laughs> that same approach. Like, you know, so if we're asking, you know, should we take a, a, a mental health day? What does that look like for those that are, you know, potentially staying home with kids? So for my case, you know, I'm just saying to all the dads out there, um, you know, when we take our day, maybe that day is with our partner, um, you know, and, and uh, to me that if, if that's not right, <laughs> forget about it. In, in my world, if that's not right, it, it makes everything a hell of a lot tougher because that's the foundation. That's she's the backbone of everything that we do. So. I'm going to add one more to it for those young dads. Uh, we talked about this before, I believe. Just, just try to identify your language of love. Mm -hmm. and call it out mm -hmm. so hey you know honey i may not get you roses every day and 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 make trails leading into any which place but i'll put gas in your car so you don't have to get out of the car if that's how you roll speak to it if it's because you get the mail for us you don't have to take extra steps speak to that you know if it's uh, your partner and he's got to do something and you do it for him ahead of time speak to that i mean if that's your language, that's your language. But I it's taken me whew, 
I mean, I've been through counseling program and everything and it, it, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out what my language of love is. And it's what was modeled for me for my parents, you know? So uh, I think we've talked about this before, but I think it'd be a nice way to wrap this conversation up. What is your language of love? Mine is the doing part. Now I still get gifts. Don't get me twisted. You know, I still do gifts, still do things. I mean, I do that. But the primary on a pie chart is doing, the doing okay. part. Thinking ahead for what somebody needs, whether it's, you know, my partner, it's my friend who I care for, whatever it is, it's that thinking ahead and, and what make their life a little easier is my language of love. What about you, John? What's your language of love? Yeah, I think, I think my, so my reactive state is always like a sense of pleasing and belonging. And so I'm the type of person that I show love and I get this from my mother, uh, Lynette Monteleone. I just want to call out her legacy. Um, I will do anything for anybody. So I'm kind of like you, Jose. Like, I, I, I'm a doer. I, I want to do for others. I want to help others. I want to lift others up when I have a chance. My own personal love language is I, I, I like affirmations. Because I, I, I like that. Like, like I said, my reactive state is that pleasing sense of belonging. So I like the people just to, you know, just to say, hey, John, like thinking of you or you're doing a good job or, you know, uh, appreciate who, who you are, things like that. Um, so, yeah, those are mine. Hmm. Two, four people and, and for myself. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go next? So uh, professionally, you know, the way I show love, uh, you know, besides my family is, you know, give them praise, you know, let people know when they're doing a good job, especially these days where you're stuck in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, people are already stressed. Like I, 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 you know, really try to show my appreciation for the work everyone's doing. Uh, my family, the, my language of love is, is pretty obvious. You know, I, I my kids are going to grow up saying, Oh God, my dad must've told me he loved me 50 times a day. Uh, you know, like uh, putting my hand on my, my boy's necks and saying, I love him, you know, um, or I'll, I'll always tell him to get, get closer. I got a secret for you. And they're like, I know what it is. I know what it is. I'm like, come on, closer, closer, closer. And it's like, I love you so much. And he's like, ah, you know, so just touching physical, physical love and, um, and, and just saying it outright. Hi, Mr. Scott, what's your language of love? Yeah. So that's an interesting, yeah, I'll go back to my faith and just like, you know, mm -hmm. every night, um, my son or, and my daughter, depending on who I get the luxury of, putting down sometimes it's both sometimes it's one um but we always uh reach out in prayer for our, um our close family and our extended family so um and then our friends right so we just throw this this prayer and it's something that my you know my grandma you know prayed with me so it's just to me like that just you know speaking faith speaking love through prayer um is how i try to do it um through my kids and through myself and yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I confess on here, like, you know, I literally say it, right, to, to, to people at, at different times, um, when they expect it and when they don't, um, you know, I want to give people their flowers uh, here, um, you know, I want to, you know, not, you know, when, when our inevitable day comes, so that's kind of how I try to do it in, in, in daily actions, and, you know, it's a struggle, I, I, I there's some people I need, to reach out to like there's some big things um going on in my life and i just have been so laser focused that i haven't shed that you know that love or even asked that question to me like even just engaging people in like thought and and, and say hey how do you feel about this I'm, I'm going through this i need you help me out and to me that's an act of love that's a you know, that's a, you know if i can make myself vulnerable enough to share then yeah i that, to me that's an act of love so all of that <laughs> Well, listen, it's been a great conversation. I hope I did a pretty good job there hosting, Tim. Yeah, you did. Uh, who's, who's next, Tim, to host? I think it's is – it, is it John next? Oh, yeah. Hey. John, yeah. He's in the batter's box. All right, John, here we go. It's going to be exciting. Yes, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, National Parents Union. Hashtag dad's bubble of love. How about that, huh? <laughs> right. We're getting that bubble in there, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, that book is coming. We just got to get going on it. Uh, so thank you once again. Thank you, all the followers. We can't wait to get one of these started in Spanish. Aquí estamos para ustedes. Very exciting. Have a great week. Stay clean and safe. Thank you. Bye, everyone.
All right. All right. How was it?